Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to the online worship service of the Lighthouse Methodist Church in Boca Grande, where we continue to receive the light, be the light, and share the light of Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Easter the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today is the principal day of the church year where life conquered death. We have a reason to rejoice. While we along with the rest of the world adjust to these extraordinary times, we are thankful to spend this coming hour with you celebrating the victory of our Savior. We hope you will be uplifted by this worship service. Easter 2020 will be one we will remember the rest of our lives. But one thing for sure, you won't be worried about having to sit in a temporary chair set up in the aisle, being offered a seat in the very back. Today, we hope you are in your favorite chair or sofa and join with us in this unique Easter celebration. Today, we thank Rodney and Linda Hollingsworth for the Easter orchids that are placed in honor of the healthcare workers and first responders battling the pandemic. We continue to pray for those working in the front lines for our health and vitality. Now please pay special attention to the newsletter that is mailed each week. It is filled with information regarding church news as well as our mission outreach. If you are not receiving that email, please go to the church website and provide your email address so you'll be added to the list. If you need to contact the church office, personnel, any of the office personnel email is the best. If you need to um, phone, the uh, phone calls are being forwarded to the staff and as they continue to remo work remotely in compliance with the Florida Surgeon General's directive. Voicemail messages will be delivered as quickly as possible. This now concludes the announcements. So with the chiming of the Trinity, please quiet your thoughts and your heart as we enter into a time of worship. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy morning in which Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, we gather as the church to watch and pray. This is the Passover of Christ in which we share in Christ's victory over death. The light of Christ's glory rises among us overcoming the darkness of sin and death. Christ is our light.
God of life, through Jesus Christ you have bestowed upon the world the light of life. Sanctify this new fire and grant that our hearts and minds may also be kindled with holy desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ rising, that we may attain to the feast of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. to know that he was in there and no one could take him out. Okay, good. And then he was in the tomb for how many days? Rapper, come show us. We put the resurrection rolls in the oven. Any pieces. Okay. Um, after three days, they went to the tomb and the, the stone was rolled away. Yeah. All right, so here's our resurrection rolls. They were in the oven for three days, <laughs> 10 minutes. Okay, and then Hampton, let's get this. Okay, can you turn it a little bit? Oh, that's hot, hold on. Okay, can you cut it? No, you wanna cut it. Cut it. Is Jesus in there? Is the marshmallow in there? Okay, say so it's, what are we gonna say? He's oh, not there, it's gone. He's not there, he has risen. He's risen indeed. Happy Easter. to one 
Let us pray together the prayer of illumination. Living God, today's good news is so wondrous, so magnificent, that we struggle to wrap our heads around it. Give our hearts the wisdom to receive that which our heads cannot fully understand. Send your spirit to fill our whole bodies with your resurrection promise. This we pray in your good and holy name. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the, but the disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, a very happy Easter to you and I welcome you on this Easter morning to the Lighthouse United Methodist Church, the most exciting church in Southwest Florida. We are so glad that you have joined us from your homes this morning to worship our risen Lord on this glorious Easter day. And we want you above all to know that God loves you, and so do we. Why are you weeping? A question that we hear in today's Gospel story of the resurrection of Jesus. It's Easter and Mary goes to the tomb and I wonder why. Why, Mary? Why did you go? What did you plan to do? What did you think you would see? Or did you go out as we all go to such places simply to remember and to weep? 
You go knowing that there is nothing to do. Nothing can be done. You have buried your fondest hopes. All you can do is mourn all that had been lost. Yet knowing this, Mary, you go to the sealed tomb to weep for your friend, lost and dead. You go to mourn and to remember, to remember when he was still alive and the shining dream of all you wanted for him, all you hoped he would be and do, still lived deeply inside your heart. You go hoping to experience again the days when Jesus still seemed something special, where it still seemed that He might be more than just one more human life on this tiny planet spinning in the dark immensity of space. You go to remember when it was possible to still believe that He was a gift of God, of grace and of mercy, and of immeasurable hope for the future. You go to remember the way his hand reached out to touch the heads of the little children and to bless them. You go to recall his pleased smile when he saw people sitting before him eager to soak up anything, any word that he might say that would lift their hearts to touch and to be touched by something holy, something wondrous, something that would lift them beyond the burden of their daily drudgeries in life. You go to remember the tear in his eyes and the catch in his throat on that day when the man fell at his feet and begged him, begged him to heal him of blindness so he could receive his sight. You go to remember the tear in his eyes and the catch in the throat on that day when the man begged him to come to his home and to heal his dying child. You go, Mary, you go to remember the fire in his eyes, his anger at senseless suffering and closed hearts. You go for that precious moment to recall the day he stood outside the tomb of his friend Lazarus and wept. Mary goes to look at the cold stone tomb and to imagine him lying there still. It's a private time to let her tears flow and to mourn her loss. And Mary, if that's why you go, I understand that. I don't understand actually what you found, for you get more than a time to remember, more than a private place to recall precious memories. You get something beyond your own comprehension. You get something that is powerfully alive and real and wonderful. You get something that goes past any expectations that you had. And what does Mary get? We imagine Mary standing there at the tomb, tired and confused with her mind running a mile a minute. She had come to the tomb out of the devotion she had to Jesus because she was a disciple of Jesus. They had a relationship of profound love. And she didn't see him there when she arrived. The stone was rolled away. Looking in with unbelief, she immediately went to tell Simon Peter and the other disciples, frantic and scared in disbelief, that after all that Jesus had gone through just a few days before, Someone would rob his body? Someone would place him somewhere else without letting them know? And she stands there and she tells the disciples, yet she didn't realize the rest of the story. 
still overwhelmed with that emotion, she bends over and she creeps in to take a look one more time. And she was weeping. We might be tempted to judge her unfairly when she continued weeping in the midst of what seems to be signs of life. Grave clothes, an empty tomb, and then the angels come and speak to her. And we understand why she is weeping. We cannot underestimate the power of her relationship as a follower of Jesus. We cannot underestimate the power and finality of death and the effect that it can have on people. None of us expects the dead to rise. And it's normal that Mary did not immediately grasp the fact that Jesus was alive as she stood there weeping and looking in. And the angels speak to her, targeting her emotions. Woman, why do you weep? And before they can answer her, she turns around and Jesus is there. She doesn't recognize Jesus. She thinks He's the gardener. And then, in a way that can only be experienced, she recognized Him when He spoke her name. He comforted her in His greeting. And she thinks, the teacher, my friend, my Savior, He's alive. He is risen just like He said. She recognized Him by their relationship. She recognized Him because He spoke her voice. Jesus spoke her name. It was a visceral and emotional and deeply personal encounter. Mary throws her arms around His neck and hugs Him tightly as if to say, I don't know if I'm awake. I don't know if I'm dreaming. I don't know if it's real or all in my mind. But either way, you are here. Jesus says, don't hold on to me. Which seems to spoil the end of the scene. But it doesn't. There is something so important that you can't really understand Easter unless you get this. And that's every time that we think that we take hold of Jesus and have Jesus for ourselves, Jesus will instruct us to go and to tell the world that He is alive. Jesus will not be confined again. Jesus is on the loose in order to loose us from every grave we find ourselves in even in that grave that we may think is final. He wants us to live our life face forward. It is the business of the resurrected Christ to call us out of the false securities that can become graves for us. Because God is still in the business of rolling away stones. In the resurrection, darkness is overcome with light. And in fact, darkness does not have the ability to suppress the hold of light's domain. Perhaps for whatever reason, this morning on this Easter day, you find yourself in darkness. Maybe you have family concerns or problems with your employment. Perhaps you have anxiety about your health and your future or anxiety about our current situation in the world. Easter promises us more than stars in our darkness. Easter promises us that in the midst of our deepest darkness, the sun rises to overwhelm the darkness forever. And not only that, God desires to embrace us in a personal way, to speak our names as Jesus spoke Mary's, to be our friend, to send us out. Jesus, the one who rises and calls us by name, He does it even if we don't recognize Him. 
even if we think he's still dead. Pope John Paul II once said, Do not despair. We are Easter people and hallelujah is our song. The risen living Jesus refuses to be imprisoned in death's solitary confinement. And this living Jesus cannot be controlled by our theological paradigms or ecclesial traditions embalmed in a tomb somewhere. We won't find the living Lord there, dressed in death's dingy, dingy clothes. Jesus is alive and on the move in the world, which is why he tells Mary, do not hold on to me. You cannot hold me down or hold me back or keep me out of people's lives. The way out of the darkness is only by moving ahead into resurrection light. Don't dwell on the memories of the past, but remember the future that I have for you. Jesus told Mary not to hold on to him, but to go and to tell others that he was alive. And we are to follow Mary's example. The risen Christ is not only for Mary or for you or for me, but for everyone. Even this story has a missional purpose for all of us. Mary went and announced her interaction with Jesus to others. Mary didn't try to explain it, to prove it, to argue with it, or to discover how it happened. She simply had a conversation and an embrace with Jesus and told her disciples, I have seen the Lord. We, like Mary, can approach the tombs of our lives and find that new life has sprung and that God still rolls away stones. In a relationship with God, the old has passed away and everything becomes new. N.T. Wright says, people who believe in the resurrection, in God making a whole new world in which everything will be set right at last, are unstoppably motivated to work for that new world in the present. Just as Jesus cared about his relationship with Mary and with the other disciples, so Jesus cares about his relationship with the entire world and with us. So when darkness seems to cover your life, when you are in despair and have lost all hope, when it seems there will be no way out, and when it seems like the weeping will never end, rise up and meet Jesus. He will be there for you. God's Son is risen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Happy Easter. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this story, this story of our faith. We thank you for the embrace that Mary had with Jesus and that he assured her that he was alive and that his promises were true. And we thank you that Mary, this first missionary of the risen Lord, went and told others. And we thank you that we have heard this story, the story of life and the story of resurrection. Amen. At this time, we are going to rise here in the church and affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, both apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now reverently declare. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning as we prepare for our time of prayer, if you have the church newsletter in front of you or on your computer, you may click and view our current prayer list. Also, if you have needs in your own heart, we trust that God hears those and we join with you to pray for those needs on this Easter morning. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, we sing the Spirit Song. Celebrating the victory of love over death, we offer our prayers to God, saying, God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, you have revealed new life to our dying creation. Your love wins. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, you bring new life to us through the new life of Jesus and promise that this is who we truly are. Your love wins. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, the powers with which we contend have been rendered powerless. Your love, your life, your presence proclaim our identity. Your love wins. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, reassure your church of your ongoing guidance during these days of pandemic. Strengthen our faith to bridge the gaps created by our need to separate, making us one in the living Christ. Your love wins, God of Easter, 
hear our prayer. Living, loving God, your new life comes specifically to our dying world. Use your people to bring joy to those who are hopeless, to bring riches to those who are poor, and to bring healing to those who are sick, especially those whom we name before you in our hearts. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Living, loving God, because of Easter we can live in hope. Open our eyes to see how everything has changed. Your love wins even here. God of Easter, hear our prayer. We pray this in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time of the service. We ask you to give your tithes and offerings. During this, our normal high season, we count on the offering to not only support the financial obligations of the church and its many missions, but to generate a surplus to see us through the summer months. I want to share with you that this past week, the Mission Committee and the Finance Committee agreed our church will not pull back from the mission budget that was established earlier this year. And further, have decided based on the consistent generosity of our wonderful church to send those funds to our missions now rather than spreading throughout the year as the need is so critical now. So please, continue with your pledges and offerings. Many of you already give through auto pay through your bank. You can also go to the church website and give online. You can mail a check to the church or leave it at the box outside the office. Thank you so much as we continue the ministry of the Lighthouse Church.
God, we offer you these gifts that we have given out of the joy of our salvation. Consecrate them by the power of your Holy Spirit and make them useful to further your kingdom, both locally and around the world. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>